Rub up your engines! Range Rovers. I was talking about money pits. Well, this guy, it hasn't been a money pit yet. He got it from a relative who paid a lot of money. He only paid 25 grand with 40 something thousand miles. He's put about 70,000 miles on it, and he really hasn't thrown any money into it yet, but he's got some nibbling problems with the transmission code. He's losing a little coolant, so let's check it out. There's no doubt in their beautiful vehicles, and they're very comfortable, a lot of leg room here, and it's got a decent little trunk, which of course, when you put the seats down, you can actually carry quite a bit. And even though it's spent its winters in Rhode Island, not particularly rusty, we'll look under here. You can see, it's still pretty clean. Where they sealed it, now you can see the bare steel's got a little rust, but it's solid. It's not rusting out by any means. They certainly perfected that. But he's worried because he had a friend with the same year, 2013. And the guy got a $13,000 transmission done. He's paid for a special warranty. Luckily he did and had the transmission replaced. He's starting to get some tranny codes. So what we're gonna do is scan it. Take it for a road trip. So we got it plugged in. We'll do an auto scan. Gotta remember to turn on the key first. While we're waiting, we can see they're comfy, beautiful cars you're riding around. There's no arguing for that. We'll do an automatic scan. There's 40 things it's scanning. As usual, it's a Range Rover. And you can see there's a lot of failures. The powertrain control module has 30 failures, but you can see there's failures all over the place, and we're only halfway through. Granted, some of these things are nitpicky stuff, but it's pretty typical with any Range Rover, basically any English vehicle. Lay your model one, you hook up a scan tool, you're gonna get codes coming out the Y. Zoo. Electricity in English? Nah, maybe they should have stayed in the dark ages with candles. Scan, you can see failure, 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 eight failures, failure, failure, 12 failures. I mean, we could spend a lot of time going through this. Start with a power turn control module. Diagnose trouble codes. And there's a whole list of them. 30 of these babies. Lost communication with restraint. Gear shift lever position sensor. Multiple sensor correlating correctly. Throttle position sensor. Lost communication with ABS. Look at this. These things are just total insanity. The amount of invalid data received from transmission control module. There are so many codes. Basically, the only thing we can do is erase them, take it for a road test, see if any obvious ones come back. <laughs> but that's what you got to deal with with these things. They're over complex electronically. It's just a level of insanity. Make your head spin. One of the big reasons I tell people not to buy them. Go back and we'll erase them before we go on a road test. Transmission control module has one failure. It was worried about the transmission. High speed can communication bus. So it's a communication failure with the transmission. It often happens on these things. They are so complex. You got a bus line. It does low speed, mid range, and high speed data all flying on the same line. It's just enough to make your head spin. We're gonna erase that too. Just for kicks, we'll look at the body control module. It's got seven failures. Tire pressure, sensors wacky, high beam circuit wacky, lost communication with engine control module slash powertrain control module A, lost communication with transmission control module. So yeah, we got communication problems with the transmission. Doesn't mean there's necessarily a transmission problem itself. It's the computer system that activates it. That's very complex. Now the all-terrain control module has to do with transmission too, so we'll check that system out. Lost communication with engine control module, power terrain control module, lost con communication with transmission control module with differential invalid data. Like I said, you could spend a week of Sundays analyzing one of these things with all these codes and all the insanity. If you're willing to drive a car with lights on and it runs good enough and you don't care, but if you're a fanatic about your car being in tip-top shape, you don't want to buy one of these things. What we're going to do is this. We're going to go back to the main data. Okay, we're going to erase everything. Now it's erasing everything, we're going to take it for a road test. Clearing all the codes. Now all the codes are gone and we will take it for a road test. In reverse with its little electronics got a backup camera we take it for a good ride now reasonably smooth riding they're fun to drive that's how they sell them they're beautiful looking just like jaguars it's not just a coincidence that it's jaguar land rover company <laughs> neither of which are known for making vehicles that don't break down all the time and cost a fortune to fix when they do but we're gonna take it for a good spin see if the transmission acts up at all and just 
look at the codes once we're done taking it for a drive. Now there's one thing about driving around in a Range Rover in Rhode Island here is you don't feel out of place. There's so many millionaires around here. You can join the crew. Hey, I should go the other way and go to the polo grounds. I can fit right in with the polo grounds with my Range Rover Evoque. Now I'm driving around. It seems to shift perfectly fine. I don't feel any wiggles or gyrations. Mechanically it seems in good shape, but there's so many computer modules and control units on this thing make your head spin so we're driving the heck out of the thing and we'll see if any codes pop up after we drive it a while okay i have to say they're comfortable they're fun to drive and i guess if you want to impress people how rich you are that you don't care how much it costs to fix it maybe you'd love driving one of these things around well let's see if any codes came back while we drove let's do the automatic scan again see what happens so far it's all clean look nothing 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 now, there's one failure we'll check that later in the heating and air conditioning but i mean what do you expect no transmission codes the gear shift module B does have a code, so let's look at that. And it says intermittent, invalid data received from the body control module, invalid data received from the engine control module, invalid data received from the gear shift control module. Okay, so that's the only thing that really popped up, showing that, yes, there is some type of wiring problem or module problem in the transmission system, and the gear shift module would be the thing that would be highly suspect because it's what popped up first. A lot of those other codes were historical codes somebody never erased. The gear shift module came back. It doesn't look like there's any kind of serious problem in the transmission itself. There's a special battery in there for the gear shift that can raise it up and down. Yes, I'm not making this up. This is the level of insanity these English have gone to. And he did replace that battery and he said when he did, it acted a little bit better than it did before. When you get a level of complexity like that, any little thing can act up. He did say that when the transmission did act up, it didn't act up on me, but when it did on him, it used to be that he could shut the car off, start it back up, and it would go perfectly fine, which shows that it's obviously some type of computer module malfunction or wiring malfunction. And now he said, sometimes no, it won't. So, just out of curiosity, if he wants to spend some money and get a gear shift module and put it in, it might solve his problem that he's got, but realize one thing. It has to be recalibrated if you install a new one. But there's only one problem. Do you want to guess with a thousand dollar plus module? <laughs> it's a thousand and eight dollars just for that little module itself. You can't buy them at AutoZone. You can only get them from Range Rovers. <laughs> and they stick it to you on these parts. There are scores of these modules. If you added all the parts together, the car would probably be a million dollars if you bought it piece by piece. So realize this about these things. They don't come cheap and they aren't easy to diagnose either. But the good news is the transmission itself is mechanically in great shape. <laughs> <laughs> it's just all the computer crap that controls it that has some problems with it. In the case of this, hey, guy got a good deal on it. He's put 70,000 miles on it. I would say it's probably time to pass it on by so he doesn't have to deal with it. He's talking about getting a nice Toyota. He said the only problem is you can keep the Toyotas more than 10 years and the problem is, well, you're going to be driving a Toyota for 10 years. So he's kind of bought into this image thing too. Me, I don't care about image. <laughs> I'd get the Toyota and say, back in the day when these things were real trucks, especially the ones with diesel engines, yeah, they could run a long time, but there's a limited lifespan on this. Realize also, this thing's only got a two liter turbocharged four cylinder engine in it. Eventually, from the weight of the vehicle, that will wear out, it's fast. But eventually, it is going to wear out. I was surprised at how fast it was. Then I look under the hood, it's got a two liter four cylinder turbo engine goes zoom zoom but when that goes the sky's the limit and this thing runs so good now he can probably get some really good money for it and just say okay i've had my experience with british products now it's time to move on to the japanese where i won't have to spend any money and think about it breaking down the line and worry about insane things like gear shifts that can move up and down do we really need such things i don't think so and here's some bonus questions and answers. N51R says, my brakes squeak when I brake and turn left. I got no 07 Lexus. I put brand new Lexus pads and rotors. Now it squeaks only when I brake and turn left. Other time, it doesn't squeak at all. Let's say you did put Lexus pads and Lexus rotors. So they're good pads and rotors. First, make sure you put all the shims on. You might not have put the shims on right and something's dragging, right? The most common thing I see 
When you use good parts, you get a noise when you turn and you hear a noise to one side. The side that's making a noise. Brakes have a dust shield on the inside. It's very thin metal to keep dust off the brakes. It's on the inside. Probably bend it doing the work. And then when you turn, you get a little bit of flex in the axle. And then the rotor will rub against that backing dust plate. If it is, just get your hands and pull it, bend it back. It's thin steel. You can just bend it right back. Probably bent one of those. And then when you turn, it rubs a little bit. I see that all the time. Those shields will get bent. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.